uh, so let's talk about some basic uh, data visualizations. So some basic charts that we have used a lot in visualizing data. So if you have taken my data visualization class, so you may already have learned those charts. So here we I just want to give you a brief review of what charts we can create. Um, and also how to interpret those charts. So data visualization is very, very powerful to understand the patterns of our data and also can give us um, some ideas at what features we should use in the machine learning. Um, so the first one that we use a lot is called histograms. So histogram is one that shows the occurrence of the occurrence of the data that in a statistical distribution. So it has been used a lot in showing the distribution of a single variable. Okay, a single variable. So, uh, so for example, here we have the price uh, distribution and also we have views distribution. So we need two histograms, two charts to show those two variables. So for the first one, we can see that uh, on the x-axis, uh, those are the range of the values. And on the y-axis, so those are the number of the records uh, or the accounts uh, that in those range. So here we can see most of the price are in the lower range. And we have uh, two records that have very high, very, very high price. And we can see the similar patterns on the views. So most of the views, most records have, uh, most of the data have uh, a fewer views. And there's only uh, several records that have a lot of views. Okay, uh, so that is a histogram to show a distribution of a single variable. However, so if you want to compare uh, the distribution of multiple variables, or if you want to have, uh, say, the information about uh, the percentile summary, and the box plot is a, is a, is a better choice. So the box plot, uh, let's see what does those markers mean. So on the box plot, the middle line indicate the median value. Okay, so that is the position of the median value. So it's not a mean value, it is a median value. And then we have the lower quantile and also upper quantile. Okay, so that is 25% of data grid or less than that value. So we have lower quantile and also upper quantile. And you can see how many the range of the um, lower quantile and also upper quantile. And then those two bars are the maximal and also minimal values. And pay attention that those maximal and minimal values do not include the outliers. So those are not the real biggest or smallest values. So those are the maximal and also minimal values without including the outliers. And outliers are defined here. So if the value is greater than this uh, threshold or lower than this threshold, so those are considered outliers, okay? Uh, so they can provide you the percentile summary and also it's a very great tool or chart that can help you compare uh, the distribution of many variables. So here we can see we have three variables and we can see their median values. So the, the yellow one has the highest median values and we can also see the minimal values so the red one has uh, the lowest median um, minimum values, and none of them have outliers that beneath the minimum values. Uh, however, the blue one has the highest, the biggest outliers. Okay, the blue one has the biggest outliers, um, and you can see they have the similar maximum values, so blue one and also the yellow one. However, the blue one has the relative lower uh, quantile, so upper quantile and also lower quantiles. And for the red one, uh, the quantile, the range is small, is narrow, and, and it has a lot of outliers. 
Okay, so that can give you a great detailed information about how those uh, three variables are distributed. A scan plot is also another great tool that can show the relationship of two continuous variables. The relationship of two continuous variables. So instead of calculating the correlation coefficient, we can also just create a scatter plot and we can see that how two variables are correlated. Uh, so in this case, we can see the price and also weight. They are strongly correlated and also they have a positive relationship. And we can see that such type of the relationship is not linear. Okay, so that, uh, so that is great. That is far way better than just simply calculating the correlation coefficient because the visualization can give us more details, so more information about the patterns. Okay, uh, so that is the scan plot. Uh, so if we put multiple scan plot in a matrix, okay, so if we put multiple scan plot in a matrix, so that is called the scan plot matrix. Uh, so the scan plot matrix is used to show the uh, relationship normally uh, among three variables or more than three variables, okay? So one single scatter plot is great to show the relationship between two variables. However, if you want to show the relationship among three variables, uh, you can create a scatter plot matrix. And we will see that one in our lab. Uh, land graph is also very simple. So it mainly it's, it's, it's used to show the trends of the variable. So in most cases for line graph, um, the x-axis is used to show the indicate the date or the time. Okay, the date or the time. And so you will see that the, the change of the variable over different time period. Okay, uh, so that's line graph. Uh, so here we can see one example. So here we can see the house price, how the price, how the unit price uh, is changing, so has been changed over the past few years. Okay, so we can say there was a spot, uh, there was a spike in that year, so in 1930, probably, and also there also a spike uh, in 1970. Okay, and then the price is, is keep lower uh, after 2000. Okay, uh, so that is a line graph. Bar graph is just used to, to compare the different values. So compare the values in different category. So here we can see that the, um, the blue bar has highest values and also the uh, yellow bar and also red bar have the similar values. So it is very, very straightforward. Uh, so it's, it's, it's still better than if you just look at the numbers. Okay, so because our, our brains uh, interpret the visual signals uh, faster than we understanding those numbers. Okay, uh, so that is a bar graph. Uh, we also have the pie graph. Uh, so I would consider the pie graph is a variation of the bar graph. So you do, you just convert, you can convert the pie graph into a bar graph into a pie graph. So they are talking about the um, the same information, so just the values in different category. Uh, however, uh, when we're using the pie graph, so pay attention that for each single pie or it, for each single variable, we should use different type of the colors or that is different hue. Okay, so different type of the colors. So we should try to avoid using same color, but um, different brightness or different situation, okay? So that is not recommended, okay? So we should use different type of colors on the pie graph. And also generally, pie graph is not recommended. So uh, try to avoid pie graph at home. So because pie graph are using the area, so those two dimension signals to represent the values instead of the bar graph, so that is using the lens, so that is one dimension. Okay, bar graph is, is using the one dimension signal, but pie graph is two dimension signal. 
um, and human tend to underestimate those two dimension signals. So that means that pad graph should not be used if possible.